how do we better lead them? Um, I'll give you my experience from uh, San Antonio, and um, because we lost our community media center about two years ago. Um, so what we what we had before was, you know, the people could just run into the studio, Time Warner ran it, they had a crew, they did everything real time, and there wasn't really a need to learn um, editing. So we lost the studio two years ago, and so what it left us with was people don't know how to do it. So the biggest need we have and have had and still have is the teaching, teaching people how to do the editing. Most people can operate a camera, you know, that's not that big of a deal. They can press the record button and maybe hopefully make some more video. But the editing part is very difficult, you know, especially if there's that, um, you know, that generation gap that the younger, you know, like the 30 and under pretty much pick up everything really fast and, you know, older, 40 and up, you know, it's just really hard for them. And so the big need, and I know in San Antonio is teaching, um, and our organization, which is South Texas Media X, has been teaching, trying to teach producers, trying to teach the public um, how to do it. But um, it's a challenge. It's, it's a challenge to, to teach people, um, but that's what they need to learn it in order to be able to do what they want to do, in order to get their voices them. heard. We teach them the, the editing what, software. What system? Uh, we teach them iMovie and just the basic movie maker, because most of these people have never, you know, they don't know, any, they don't, uh, a lot of people they don't even know how to, you know, type a Word document or attach an email attachment, you know, that type of stuff. So that's been the big need. Uh, at least in, that I found in San Antonio right now. Um, there was a uh, annual um, summer youth media camp that happened here in Austin, and a lot of the activities on the campus were teaching Metro, former Metro students, and um, other folks, activists in the community, helped coordinate that. It was called the uh, Youth Liberation Network's Summer uh, Youth Media Camp. and. Um, one of the uh, outcomes was that folks who, students who participated in the radio production aspect got to record at KVRX, which is the on-campus on stadium station. And so they immediately got to broadcast it and create it on-site um, during that week. Um, the camp, each of the years it was in existence. It doesn't happen anymore, but to me that was a really great model for how a workshop could not only put the tools of production quickly easily into the hands of the youth, but they also determine the content. And there was uh, also uh, kind of a, a politicization process, too, in terms of, um, well, the, the term empowerment, depending on the, of, um, of the title. Of the so um, they were talking about issues and um, democracy and things like that. It wasn't just about your youth do something fun. I mean, they were thinking about uh, serious issues. I don't know if there are any models from other cities that could be discussed or whatever to educate youth in diverse communities. Well, there's a number of youth radio groups across the U.S. Some are well-funded, some are totally unfunded. Uh, and it gets right back to you have the number, you have the media, the digital divide. People who don't have access to the media, they don't have the opportunity to, ed to get educated about it. Uh, and then something of the demystification of the media. Most Americans are used to just consuming radio or television. It's a one-way thing. And one of the big things that we do, of course, is that we make it possible for regular folks to be on the radio, to be on the television, to get their word out. Uh, the way I describe it in my work is it gives uh, folks an opportunity to speak for their community and to their community. That's not allowed uh, in the mainstream media. The other thing that's allowed, of course, is time. That on the local network news, whatever town you're from, you know, a big story runs, what, three minutes, two and a half? Uh, an in-depth story might be, you know, three and a half minutes. Whereas a cable access show, if you're talking about whatever the local issue is, you can spend an hour talking about it in-depth and cover all the nuances and all the political subterfuges involved, and you can really educate people. The difference between commercial radio and TV and what we do is that the sole purpose of commercial radio and TV is to provide listeners and viewers for advertisers. That's the only reason it exists. We're here to serve the community and allow the communities to speak to themselves and for themselves. You know, something that just occurred to me about um, determining value for the community is that, um, in, in my experience, one of the differences between commercial media and, uh, and uh, I mean, mostly radio, but this, this holds true for TV as well, 
between commercial and non-commercial is that in non-commercial media we tend to be more grassroots and lower budget, so we don't really do, it's more shoot from the hip production and expression rather than actually doing ascertainment. And, uh, you know, in the best of all possible worlds, maybe we could use the internet in years to come and perhaps some kind of cross-promotional campaign with, with direct mail or, I don't know, maybe other media. Um, we could ascertain what's on the minds and what's, what, what exists, what the priorities are of an agenda for people who might take part in community access media, whether it's TV or radio, and find out what's on their mind through, like I say, through, through more of a grassroots means, like the internet, instead of having to spend lots of money. So that would necessitate collaboration and partnering, maybe with commercial sponsors or with government grant money or some kind of agency. But I'd like to see more ascertainment done so that we, we in the non-commercial media and community access especially, would be probably serving more needs than just our own individual communities that we represent. We, we, we could actually reach out more to the mainstream. I'd like to see that happen. I'm sorry, can you define what you mean by ascertainment? Ascertainment is where you, actually it's usually some kind of polling device or a question uh, questionnaire where you ask people what they want to see expressed. What, what information do they want? Instead of determining it within yourself, and I mean that's the way we normally work in community media, we say I want to see this or, or the people that I know are interested in this and so I'm going to produce a show about it. I'm going to learn to produce a show. But in fact, if we sort of, like I say, if we, if we reached out to people that are beyond our immediate communities that we're, we're members of, we might have a little bit more, a little bit deeper form of, of participatory democracy. Now. 